You may think you know a lot about the internet, but don't skip over this video because it will uncover new insights that will enhance your knowledge and use of it. My name is Tim Pachalka from the Learn Programming Academy, and in this video, I'll talk briefly about the internet with a capital I, which distinguishes it from the generic internet term. You and I utilize the internet just about every day to accomplish whatever we want our tablets, laptops, phones, or wearables to do for us. The internet really is fascinating. Let's take a look. The origin of the internet can be traced back to over 50 years ago to the United States government's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to create a connected system that would not be disrupted by local disasters. Other agencies worldwide contributed to the joining together of PANs, LANs, MANs and WANs to create the internet, which involves millions of computers. Do you know that the internet is a free service? Well, yes it is. However, organisations called Internet Service Providers or ISPs construct and maintain it and provide what many of us call an on-ramp that connects our devices to the internet. The on-ramp is a metaphor resembling vehicles on ramps to fast highways like the Autobahn in Europe, the interstate system in the USA and others. The ISPs do have a charge to use their on-ramp so we all pay something to get connected but the movement through the internet itself is free. Currently, the ISPs operate and manage their internet for hierarchical tier levels. Tier 1, which is at the top of the hierarchy and considered the backbone of the internet, consists of a few ISPs that utilize high capacity, high speed international wide area networks. Worldwide, traditional telephone companies tend to be these tier 1 ISPs. Tier 2, which is thought of as the core of the internet, are operated by geographically regional ISPs and include computers and routers that transmit messages between Tier 1 and Tier 3. Communication companies tend to be Tier 2 ISPs. Tier 3 ISPs, often referred to as access ISPs, are the ones who charge the on-ramp access and fees. Local cable and telephone companies tend to be the access ISPs. Now here's something that will blow your mind. Every device connected to the internet must have its own unique address or way of identifying itself given billions of devices appear to be connected. But the reality is that far less devices are actually connected directly to the internet. For example, if you have a smartphone, laptop or tablet in your home all connected wirelessly to the internet, that would be three devices. However, your three devices are connected to your router or modem, which keeps track of your three device addresses and sends out onto the internet on ramp just one address for the router or modem. The response comes back from the internet to the router or modem and it distributes that response to the correct device that sent the request message. This same example runs throughout the internet, thus significantly reducing the number of different device addresses passing end-to-end -end or source to target within the internet. Device addresses originally conformed to what is called the IPv4 pattern of addresses. The IP stands for Internet Protocol and the V4 refers to a 32-bit pattern divided into four 8-bit sections. This scheme allows for a few billion unique addresses. Worldwide, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, that's ICANN, awards blocks of numbered IP addresses to ISPs. Several years ago, ICANN saw the need for more IP addresses, thus started a shift to create IPv6 addresses, which expand the 32-bit pattern in V4 to 128 bits in the V6 pattern, thus accommodating trillions of devices. Now, I'm going to talk more about that in a later video of this section. A typical IPv4 address might look like this, 172.16.254.1 in decimal notation. Now that's not too hard for human consumption. However, to make it easier for humans, I can create a domain names. Domain names are mnemonic, symbolic name equivalents to the IPv4 or IPv6 numeric patterns. There are domain name servers, DNS, located through the internet that do the translation from mnemonic names to the numeric equivalent as all addresses travel through the internet as the numeric patterns, not the mnemonic names. For example, a mnemonic name Amazon.com will be resolved by a DNS to its IPv4 or V6 numeric equivalent, for example, 54.239.26.214. Or Google.com will be resolved by a DNS to 205.251.242.103. These IPv4 addresses are not the correct ones for Amazon or Google, but are just to show how a DNS does its lookup and resolution. Domain names can be named just about anything 
but they all end up in a top level domain ID, TLDs, such as .com, .org, .edu, etc. Today there are thousands of these TLDs, including country TLDs such as .au for Australia and .ca for Canada, etc. Another valuable aspect of using mnemonic or symbolic names is that humans become very familiar with these names and use them regularly. An organization like Amazon can then easily change the target IPv4 resolution address without humans knowing anything about that. Amazon.com is always Amazon.com no matter what IPv4 or IPv6 that name resolves to via a DNS. Finally, the process of using DNS to perform a translation from mnemonic to numeric is called a DNS lookup. The last topic in this video reviews some common internet applications, services that you and I actually use. A few of the early applications running across the internet included File Transfer Protocol, FTP, to move files around the internet, and Telnet, or its newer Secure Shell, SSH, used to gain access and control of a remote computing device. Today, many internet services are accessed or used via Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, which I'll discuss in the next video. Sending and receiving email across the internet uses one of several protocols. The most common one, is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, SMTP. Others include Multipurpose Internet Mail Extensions, that's MIME, Post Office Protocol version 3, POP3, and Internet Mail Access Protocol, IMAP. People everywhere now use voice conversations across the internet with applications like Skype, Zoom, and others. These applications use Voice over Internet Protocol, VoIP, to transmit and receive audio signals. Closing out this video is streaming, which is the moving of both audio and video across the internet in real time. Many live performances, concerts, plays, church services, sporting events, etc. are now streamed as they happen in real time, or they can be stored and accessed at a later time. Now we don't have to necessarily watch a sporting event as it's happening, or not at all. We can simply record it and play it back later. That's pretty cool technology. The internet continues to evolve to meet the ever-growing demand for services and applications for corporations, organizations, universities, nonprofits, and individuals like you and me. There's no end in the foreseeable future for it, and I hope there never is a fee to use it beyond the current on-ramp type of fees. All right, so that concludes this video on the internet. Do you know what WWW stands for? Find out the answer in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. All righty, this is the part of the video where I meant to get all enthusiastic and to ask you, or quite literally beg you, to subscribe to my channel and to like the video, leave a comment and all that stuff. Well, I'm gonna leave that decision in your capable hands to decide whether I've earned a like or a subscribe or a comment. I'd be grateful if you do one, both or all three. My videos will get out there and in front of a bigger audience if I get that level of engagement, but obviously it's your choice. All right, so remember that this series was meant to be watched in order. So if you haven't watched from the start, then how dare you watch my video series out of order? <laughs> Click the link over here to get to the first video in the series and watch that if you want to see the entire series in order. Or come over here and click to view the previous video in the series. Again, your choice. All right, I'm done. Catch you in the next video.